Sonic Talk. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sonic Talk, episode 505. That's right, folks. It's uh, it's one of those numbers that kind of ties in with um, musical equipment. In fact, I think I had a little video here of a few 505s. They all seem to be from Roland. Here we go. This is the, the classic uh, RS505 paraphonic strings. With the without the ensemble, sounds really, really not very good at all. So we'll, we'll skip that one. And we've also got uh, the TR five hundred five, which is the, yeah. uh, the uh, hasn't got any visuals. This is by Synthmania, that classic sort of semi Lin style. Oh, there it is. That's not a five hundred five. So anyway, yeah, those are my five hundred five references. There are a couple of others. There's, uh, I think there's now the DJ505, which is the controller thing from Roland as well. So I just thought I'd throw those all in there. Um, in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, this is obviously the Music Technology Podcast from Sonic State. Uh, it goes along with all of our other editorial content. You may have seen our recent uh, piece on the uh, boutique... SEO2, uh, various other things that are coming along, and uh, we're basically every week, 4pm Wednesday, this is live recording, if you're not hop- watching this live, then do hop over to sonicstate.com forward slash live, and we'll be around from about 4pm every Wednesday, where you can get the live chat room. Hello chatties, are there the people in the ch- in the YouTube chat room, because we stream live to YouTube, you can find us if you subscribe, you'll get a notification, and also in our own little uh, IRC chat room as well, so uh, details on how to connect to that over at sonicstate.com forward slash live. Uh, so that's it. Um, th- uh, and I also want to say thank you very much to uh, Isotope for providing a competition prize this week. Uh, you'll be able to find out how you can win a copy of Isotope's RX-6, the excellent audio restoration and general fix-it kind of uh, tool for everything to do with audio. So um, let's get on to our guests. Uh, we'll start over here with, uh, let's say hello to Mr. Mark Tinley, who uh, who's, seems to have lost some height in the intervening uh, week since we've seen him. I don't know what's happened, Mark. Have you had some sort of uh, a, a accident, or is it just a question of the, the the wrong type of seating? Oh no, here we go. We're going to fix it. We're going to have by the magic of that's good. Yeah, no, God, don't snap the uh, anything on your. How are you, Mark? Mark Tilly, Sonus Magus, uh, where right. he runs a shop in uh, I run things. <laughs> Glastonbury. Uh, also, saying nice. Uh, um, how are you, Mark? I'm all right. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad to hear it. Uh, Shall I tell you something exciting? Oh, go on uh, then, if you must. <laughs> um, Never mind. I, I don't know, what am I meant to say? I don't know. I've, I've got, I used to be rubbish at saying goodbye. That was about 400 episodes ago. Now I can't say hello. What's happened? <laughs> well, it's just it's just the bit in the middle that matters. So anyway, but do 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 stay with us. I've got light, idea. <laughs> light bulb moment. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us, Mark. And also uh, we have uh, Mr. Charles Chicky Reeves, who's there in his moodily lit studio sublime-uk.com uh, where he's uh, produces mixes composes uh, also one of the brief times where he's not out on the road mixing uh, for various artists uh, stateside and all over the place so this is a brief respite right is that charles from uh, from I'm, your your I'm touring month, duties so i'm here for a month so i'm uh, i'm hopefully on the show for a month <laughs> so, excellent yeah well we'll yeah. don't 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 bet on it. We'll see how you get on today, shall we? Let's let's not <laughs> okay. let's not jump ahead. <laughs> but I have to say, uh, your video quality is great, and your sound quality. You got a different mic this week. I do. I'm using a, a Lewitt 640 TS, which I absolutely love. It's a fa- oh, I don't know if you know about that mic. It's a mic that has a secondary XLR out on it, so you can record both sides of the capsule at once. So you do stereo recordings, or later decide how you want the mic to have been sort of positioned. You know, by you know. Uh, oh, you can uh, adjust it afterwards, system. like the kind yeah. of sphere system, that kind of idea. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just using it in hypercardioid right now, which is weird because you say it sounds like it's about a foot from your mouth, but it it's not. <laughs> so it's um, obviously got no. It's some... well, that's the hypercardioid. It's just a very direct sound. It's really that's that's why I chose it. Yeah, but it, it's very it's cool. It's switchable. It's got you know pads on it and filters, low low frequency filters. It's fantastic. So I'm just using that today. So excellent. it sounds good. A good choice, and uh, we are hearing the fruits of that choice as well. And we also have Mr. Steve Hillier, uh, who uh, joined Hi. us l- uh, last week for the first time. D- Steve, obviously, um, back in the day in Dubstar. Uh, Dub- does Dubstar still exist? Is it still a thing, or are you uh, on to other stuff? Um, 
Uh, no, not really. Uh, we kind of um, had a hiatus back in uh, 2000. And we've, we've tried a few things out together, but at the moment, the, uh, the stars aren't aligning. Um, oh, very good. Yeah, maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> the stars. Um, uh, the star, um, and I think one of the tunes was, in fact, was it the stars come out? The stars? It was just called stars, wasn't right. it? One of the, yeah, of course, it, uh, it was called stars. It was um, one of my proudest moments was uh, that it was referenced in a Doctor Who episode. The key line in the song was the stars are going out. And there was a trailer for Doctor Who about five or six years ago where they kept saying that. Uh, so I, I'm convinced that this was because of our song. I'm convinced. In fact, yeah, I'd, I'd stick with that. That's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. And so um, you're, <laughs> yeah. right now you're kind of you're involved in education and also uh, production and uh, yeah, that, that's and right. And, and uh, uh, writing. In fact, I'm just preparing to uh, go away for a little uh, writing session down in uh, Spain uh, tomorrow for a few days, which should be uh, quite nice. Um, although it's involved me um, having to install Windows 10 on a MacBook Air this morning and Honestly, it's like going back to the 90s in terms of computing. You've got to get a sequence of events perfectly correct. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. And uh, and in the end, you've got Windows. So, you know, was it worth it? I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know. Windows, in fact, this this whole switching system runs on a Mac Pro with uh, Windows 10 on it. And it's uh, we right. use, most of our systems run Windows 7. Um, but this is this was Windows 10. I just thought I'll get the latest OS so I don't have to. But I've I've just got I've got a couple of boot camps. Unfortunately, when you do the boot screen, it just says Windows, 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 and it's like, well, which one's which? And there's no way of renaming those discs. So it's like, yeah, it's the third one along. Don't forget that we'll boot into that one. But anyway, yeah, right. that's kind of uh, that's kind of how it works. Anyway, Steve, thank you very much for joining us. Um, uh, sounds like it's going to be fun. Uh, you're chasing the weather, I guess, because it's pretty crap here. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, it's still pretty nice uh, down in uh, Marbella, which is where I'm going. And it stays there nice until about mid-November most years. So, uh, oh. cheers. I'm, sen I'm sensing this is a regular thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Excellent. Yeah. Well, good choice. Um, so, uh, well, the first thing I suppose we should say just quickly is obviously um, we talked about the D50 announcement uh, and that Roland were talking about. And I think... Uh, what we ended Hello, up with, oh, that's the wrong one, that's the wrong one, uh, it was the DO5. I won't, we won't spend too much time on it, it was just because we talked about the D50 a lot last week, but it's here it is, yes, it is in fact synthesizer it used, uh, the DO5 Boutique, and, uh, which is essentially uh, exact all the sort of bits of the D50, but in a much smaller package, and it's still programmable and all those things. This, this is Lego Belt. And this sounds like the org to me. Digital synthesizer also has a very uh, pure mellow tone. Anyway, it's a very warm. I won't play the whole thing, but yeah, three, four, nine, and it's another boutique. And for all of my kind of yeah, whatever, there's something about when you see it, you just go, oh, that's quite cute, actually. And I, I don't know whether or not uh, it's something I actually do want. I don't think I really do, but I just it's it's the sort of thing that if you've already got a boutique, you sort of think, well, it would look quite nice next to the others. <laughs> uh, Steve, have you uh, have, have you changed your 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 thoughts about this? Are you thinking, well, you know, maybe it could be useful, right? Stick in your bag, take it for yeah. the writing weekend. Well, I'm I'm definitely a uh, uh, fan of boutiques, and um, you know, it's like top trumps, isn't it? You've got to collect them all. Um, the it it sounds great. It looks nice. Although to be honest, I haven't seen one in the flesh, so to speak. But there was one thing that just struck me that this disappointed me a little bit, which is that there was an opportunity here to improve on the user interface to make programming the D fifty easier, and they didn't take it. Now I, mm. I appreciate that there's not a lot of space on the boutique. You know, uh, for, in fact, I've got one just here. Um, but just a few sliders would have been nice. Do you know what I mean? Just to open out the, uh, the possibility of doing some uh, easier sound design. Mm, well, maybe they're going to bring out a boutique PG-1000. There's a thought, <laughs> eh? So you can have a companion for it. Okay. <laughs> Which is, it does nothing yeah. apart from being a MIDI controller. That'd be pretty yeah, awesome. Be hey, Mark. <laughs> I, sorry, Steve. You were just about to... Well, well I was just going to say, would... in terms of... The the sound of the thing, um, it sounds to be identical to the original, which which makes sense because it was always digital. Um, and if you, you know, there's a lot of people who are fans of that sort of chiffy late 80s sound of which I would include myself. So, yeah, I think so. I think so. I think it's going in my gig bag. 
Ah, uh, okay. Well, I, I must admit, uh, the AB stuff I heard, it just sounded just a little bit more high fidelity to me. Just a, the, the reverb was a little richer and wider. So, that, you know, maybe it's just they're taking advantage of that extra DSP just to flesh it out a bit. I don't know, Mark, I can't imagine the D50 is a sort of uh, something you'd reach for if you were looking for a classic uh, 80s instrument, right? Um, what, how many more times are they going to release the D50 in another format? Oh, well, because I think we've got at least one more after this. You think? Uh, well, yeah, full size got in the box. D50 watch, Rodan's D50 watch. I mean, I just, I don't know. I really just want them to do new things, and I just get, I guess, I'm getting a bit bored of things, kind of going round and round, and then oh, let's just put the same technology in another thing. So the last time the D50 came out in another format, it was on a PCMCIA card, I think, which could plug into the back of a V-Synth. And then you could reboot your vSynth and turn it into a D50, which I thought, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. But um, I don't I, no, I want to hear new things, new sounds. Well, that's, new that's fair enough. I wonder if I they really... just made a ho- I wonder if they made a, a, a load of those DSP cards and what they've actually done is just figured out a way to put it inside a boutique box. I think they so, um, well, a warehouse I think they full of them. I reckon they spend astronomical amounts of money on R&D and then they have to recover the cost of it. Um so they're forever churning out things with a D at the beginning because we had the D10, the D20, the D, I don't know, it went on D110 D1 and D70. Yeah, and so the, D70. Oh, that was different technology though, wasn't it? But um, And the DJ70, uh, that, let's not forget. I don't know. You know, that whole idea of taking PCM sample and then, uh, and then having an attack portion and a release portion, I mean, that sampling has come on so far since then that take the same like engine or idea and then build something with like really high quality samples that works in the same way, but can utilize like a much bigger memory bank. And then you might have something that would interest me. Same with the filters, you know, use more DSP on the filters. And I don't know, uh, uh, Roland reverb in any shape or form doesn't tickle my ears. I'm afraid I always just switch it off and then put something nice on afterwards. So there's not, I don't think there's one, any one of their algorithms. I've got the V guitar thing, and I just reach for that button that switches it off every time. <laughs> so uh, even the plate or the spring just don't do it for me. But I don't know, personal choice. I think I'm n- nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't seem to fit my music or. Uh, or the way that I hear things. Well, that's fair enough. Anyway, 349, and uh, some wag in the comments said, yeah, that's bizarre, because I just bought a, an actual D50 in a flight case for 200 bucks <laughs> just the other well, day. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of funny. The one thing about having... Oh, sorry. Uh, should I talk? Charles. Yeah. Go, Charles. Okay, yeah. yes. I, I was just going to say, you know, the, the with the what Roland is doing, you know, we're sort of in danger of, of uh, retro catching up with the present. Um, meta meta yeah exactly but i mean i, I, I the d50 is uh, it's it is cool sounding and everything and it, it, I, if they made a programmer for it though it'd probably be about the size of a of an iphone and it would have like you know 50 sliders on it they're about this long each um but uh <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i i mean this would be kind of cool to have i i agree with what mark is saying about like their reverbs and stuff like i when i mix howard I use uh, Howard Jones. I do a um, we we do it on a roller console, and I carry outboard reverbs because I prefer the sound of those. I, I carry a Bricasti with me because it just sounds amazing, you know. Um, but all the all the internal reverbs, I was I'm just not a big fan of the reverbs. But I do I love I love their synth ideas, you know. It would be nice if they came out with something just like really like Mark said, just something new, something groundbreaking. And they, the closest thing I've seen is that SE02 so far. You know, that's at least that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I think I got you there, but I I know it wasn't on the topic list, but I felt we had to because it did happen in the week between uh, this and the previous show. So, um, uh, oh, I should also point out I'm uh, I'm sipping from the uh, the Sonic State merch, uh, which is the Sonic State mug. Uh, you can buy T-shirts and stuff with this, and with the classic logo. There you go. That's the uh, 11 ounce mug in uh, sort of purplish color. Uh, just head over to Sonic State. There's links to the merch place. If you fancy something like this, then uh, go ahead. That's my plug over. And with I don't want to don't want to over egg it. Uh, what's our first video then? Ah, yes, this is the new Spire uh, system from Isotope. Funnily enough, they're getting into hardware and they've made this kind of 
um, hardware recorder that connects over Wi-Fi to, I'm guessing, just iOS devices at the time for oh, the time being, and allows you just to record. So there's an auto gain system, and then you can arrange, you can multi-track, and then spit them over to somebody else to collaborate, and then process and mix as well. Uh, as you can probably guess from the story, this goes on. She then fleshes out a bit. And then she sends it to the bass player, puts his bass on. And then, uh, and then finally, they record the entire song. And it's a lovely, it's a lovely moment. I think she's got a stereo mic input, so you could, you know, they, the, the drums were recorded with that, they said as well, which is possible if they had a decent stereo mic set up and stuff. Um, this is the sort of thing that it's interesting, isn't it? Because I mean, we we get portable, we get you know field recorders, we get those sort of things. But this is something that really simplifies the process. I mean, it's actually quite an interesting concept. I mean, do you think? I know um, Steve, you're going to do a songwriting course, but a songwriting thing. I, I presume you're taking a bigger stuff. But yeah. if you just had something like this, and yeah. the, the the muse took you, it's, it could be quite useful, right? Yeah, this is exactly uh, uh, you know what would appeal about this unit to me. It's the idea of just getting something out of your bag, putting it down, pressing go, and then just recording what you've just made up. You know what I mean? I mean, I'd, for years now, um, you know, songwriters have used uh, things like dictaphones, and, and in modern day, it's all sort of iPhones and that kind of thing. But there's something about picking up an iPhone and then pressing the home button and then putting in your code and then finding the app and, and all that kind of thing, getting rid of the pictures of your cats. And it all interrupts the sort of flow of what you're doing. So the idea of having a unit that just has this purpose, which is to record something and straight away, um, it, it it's a good thing. It, it doesn't it, it stops you breaking the the creative flow. Um, and it, it wasn't entirely clear to me whether the unit would record internally sure. and then spill it out to your iOS I'm not device. sure that would be that would be the uh, that would be the ideal scenario to fit what you want I'm not sure if you don't need the app as well I'm not sure about that it, I think, I think yeah. they're kind of tightly integrated so maybe you have to do both but if there were, even if it was just a small, small sort of like a buffer um you know storage within the machine so that maybe you could record let's say 10 minutes of stuff and then it had to dump it to the iPhone or whatever that would be great, and and it would be certainly something that I'm um, interested in myself. Plus, also, again, it wasn't entirely clear um, from the the video or the press release. Getting audio out of an iPhone is always a real pain. The amount of time I've had to help people getting like a voice memo out of their phone. So we've written something. We've got twenty minutes worth of jamming, and then emailing. It's impossible for this machine. So there's always some sort of uh, annoyance. If you could just simply drag the audio from this iOS uh, application onto whatever you want, door you're, you're using, that would be a real time saver as well. So hopefully we get more information about this. It, it certainly would be something that I would be interested in. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I mean, I can recommend, I'm trying to think what the name of the app is. I think it might be called iPhone browser. I forget now, but I use it. Um, uh, it just opens it up like a drive and you can pull it all in and grab, you know, storage for various different programs. And it, it I mean, it's quite expensive, like 40 bucks, but it, it stops all of that nonsense. Wow. Uh, Mark, I'm guessing, you know, I mean, you use your iPhone for on the go creat creativity, I mean, or have done. I mean, is this the sort of thing that you could stick in the corner of the shop and when you're tinkering with one of your uh, bizarre instruments, you go, oh, I'll just grab that. I do. I need something for recording bizarre human conversations in the shop. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I what, do. You know what? The problem with the phone isn't the fact that you have to press the home button, find the app, click on the app, get to the thing, and get yourself into the uh, flow of creativity. The problem with the iPhone is that the moment you start recording something, somebody sends you a text message right in the middle of it and goes, and then completely messes up the audio recording or maybe you're just getting ready to record or whatever. So I, I'm sort of losing faith in using my iPhone for that kind of thing. Although when I do, I use a program called Audio Share, uh, and I can send things to iCloud, and then I just drag them out of iCloud and pull them into my digital audio workstation. So that works really well, because Audio Share allows you to record as well. Um, I, I And 
you know, as somewhere else, and that is that people that come into the shop want simplicity. There's a lot of people who don't understand the world we live in, and they want to be a part of the world that we live in, but they want simple user interfaces, and they want to be able to record stuff. And then they, they always ask me, Mark, can you show me how to do this, that, or whatever? And as soon as I start showing them, they go, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's so complicated. I could never do that. How can you do that? Why are you so clever? And I go, it's really not that complicated. I've just been doing it for a while. But they want instant, simple access to music technology, like high-quality recordings that they can then perhaps take to someone like one of us and then uh, put into something like Pro Tools or Logic or whatever and then kind of continue from there. So if it can do that, if it's simple enough that, uh god i was gonna say something really bad <laughs> yeah. if it's simple enough that a dog can use it uh then uh and can plop his paw on there and sing his song into it and then uh share it with his audio engineer then it would be a really good thing indeed i think yeah but, um, i think i think i think i would sorry Mark, i think i would agree I, with that iPhone. yeah the, I, I the iphone bit could still be a problem you could still get texts from people right in the middle of your recording couldn't you so yeah, well, maybe the thing is, is with an app like that, when you're using it, you just it's got a mode where you just go, while I'm recording, just turn all my notifications off. Just just get rid of everything. But I expect you would need too many You'd permissions. Hope. <laughs> You'd they hope, don't yeah. all have that. Though. They don't, do they? Yeah. Charles, I, I mean, when you're on the road, uh, presumably you have your laptop and stuff. So, you know, you might have a bit of downtime in the hotel room and you might be w having to work on stuff. I mean, what mm -hmm. about when you're... Uh, when you're not even that prepared? I mean, do you just mumble into your iPhone or how do you do it? Yeah, most of the time it's it's uh, it's into the iPhone or I have um, the Edderall, the stereo recorder. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I don't do that much. Like I, I, I've never had an experience, even carrying good mics and stuff like that, I've ne never had an experience where something I've done on the road has been the quality that I really want. It's mainly just to get an idea down. Uh, I mean, this is sort of, this will sort of bridge the gap. And it, if, if this works the way they're, describing it in the in the video and it's that easy then then great but um I've, I've never experienced anything that's even remotely i mean i have the like the the iConnect audio for whatever it is the the one that plugs into my ipad and stuff yeah. which is great because then you don't get notifications because you can go offline but uh even that it's it's it is as great as that is it's still not that simple and you know there's there's nothing that ever seems to be simple but to address something earlier you were saying is, um, about like how do you take the files off, most programs these days luckily will interface with Dropbox. And so I just just stick stuff on Dropbox and then it shows up on every one of my devices. So it's very, very easy. Yeah, I can that, easily share files. That does make sense because, I mean, I don't know about you, but I, the thing I have a problem I have with iCloud is we've got a bunch of different devices here and all it does is nag me and say you need to upgrade. You know, it's like I don't want to store my entire backup of my art. Uh, iphone in the cloud necessarily or whatever it is i don't use an iphone but you know we've got iphones for certain purposes so mm -hmm. you know it means that you then got to kind of buy the extra stuff and it's always a bit you know i just want whereas dropbox yeah. you get two gigs and you know if you keep it clean and you don't really kind of use it a lot you just use it for transfer then you've got that option with icloud you can but it's a lot more fiddly to to to, to granulize that storage i think that's the problem you get. Agreed. Uh, yeah. Agreed. Uh, i think as i said it was uh what was it three uh, it was about um Oh, let me see. Three hundred forty-nine bucks. I think the thing's going to go for. Uh, I thought I had a picture of it here somewhere, but it looks like I, I think it has so, a couple of Grace to like preamps, which are really good. Oh, yes, that's that's no, the great the Grace preamps. That's definitely. Uh, let me have a look. I must have it. I think I should. She's sitting in a put... park recording, though, isn't she? So if she's sitting in a park, there's going to be like people walking past, people on bicycles, push chairs with children, airplanes going overhead. None of the stuff that people who aren't audio engineers will think about. So anybody who's not an audio engineer will look at that and go, "Ooh, I want to have one of those. I want to buy one of those." Um, but their recordings are going to be full of nonsense, aren't they? All the stuff, well, the background RX, stuff. Well, as we know, RX does have uh, a lot of. Uh, oh, so there, that's what it looks like. It's like it's got a puck type thing. It's kind of a bit like an Amazon uh, uh, Alexa or that sort of stuff, I suppose. Yeah. Which I'm well, that'd be clever. Large. I could do that as well. Has it got rx technology built into it is that what you're saying okay. i don't know if it does it has it has, I said, it has oh blackbird I'll tell you. <laughs> we'll, we'll remove that for you that's yeah, possible old it's lady possible. with a rocking stick oh just oh uh, that's gone i mean i know it can do it but ice cream van wouldn't yeah. that be brilliant 
Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, anything that enables people to to do stuff is great, and it, there seems to be uh, quite a bit of a buzz about about it. So you know, we wish them every uh, every success. And uh, oh yeah, here we go. This is what the back looks like. So you have got a pair of uh, combi jacks there. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, and they, I guess it's they got back- barely come out with great stuff. So I, I I can't see why this won't be a hit. It looks a little bit large from from the video. Like it's kind of because she's trying to put it in a bag. It's like you know, it's like I can understand they made it a bit flatter and wider, but instead they made it kind of tall. And uh, but you know, it, it, I mean, those preamps alone will will be worth the money. I think you know, those, those like Grace preamps, great, yeah. So. They should do. Uh, well, bizarrely enough, <clears throat> we'll probably just kick in with our uh, Isotope ad because that was just a feature about <laughs> their side stuff. So let's have a word but, uh, because Isotope, as we know, are, oh, that's the wrong that's the wrong ad. Here we go. Isotope, of course, uh, are providing the prize for our um, Sonic Talk podcast and it's RX6, uh, which is up for grabs this week and this is the music production bundle and it allows you to clean up audio in so many different ways. You can de-clip, de-noise, <clears throat> spectral DS, uh, uh, spectral repair, uh, de hum, de click, uh, de mouth noise, de breath. I mean, there's so many different ways that it can be used uh, to repair any audio. And this is again, you know, if you do, if you have got that issue with your Spire recording and it's a bit noisy for whatever reason, this should be able to deal with it quite easily. So we heartily recommend if you're into audio at all and you regularly need to kind of either edit or do stuff to it to kind of get it into shape. RX6 is one of those invaluable tools that really does help. And uh, as we say, Isotope are sponsoring the show with a prize of RX6. If you want to check it out for yourself, isotope.com forward slash RX6 is where you need to go. And we have uh, a winner from last week uh, who's someone called Tweety Babs. Uh, Tweety uh, Tweet Y B A B Z. Uh, and they said, worst, worst nightmares vanish in thin air like they were never there when you use RX6 for vocal repairs. And it rhymes as well. I'm, I'm guessing there might be a lyricist or something. So, uh, Tweety Babs, if you want to get in touch, <clears throat> excuse me, then uh, we will be able to furnish you with a copy of RX6. Uh, thank you very much to Isotope for their sponsor of the show. And of course, we've got a, another competition this week. And uh, this week, we're looking for the hashtag powerful editing as one word, the hashtag powerful editing and the hashtag RX6. And you tweet those and you mention the at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. Uh, so the hashtag Powerful editing, one word, that's one L, as I discovered in my spell checker. The hashtag RX6 at, to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. And you'll be entered into the competition. And once again, we do thank them for their continued provision of the prize for the show. It's been awesome. So uh, what was I? Oh, yeah. Now, this was something I was going to, I wasn't going to do. I, I've got, uh, I've actually got this. So I was going to, uh, let me see if I can actually bring this up on the screen. Because this is, uh, yeah, here we go. This is basically the uh, v, uh, VCV rack. And this is a patch I created using the VCV rack. VCV rack is basically a free modular system. There's a little uh, spring reverb in there. There's a scope. There's mixers. There's a sort of cloud, uh, um, not clouds, what's that? Uh, grain, isn't it? The, uh, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the company now. Mutable instruments, yeah, because they're open source hardware, so they've made uh, some of their modules and also uh, Bifarco and some of their own stuff. That's one patch I did, but this is basically, I'll turn that down, this is just self-generate because a little sequence running and I think I'm uh, modulating the delay time and I'm running a sequence and then I'm just mixing it through a couple of filters. Uh, oh yeah, there's this cloud generator and I forget who makes the original of that. That's quite an interesting one. Hold on, let me just bring that down. It's that one I want. This is quite an issue because it's like it, it creates these sort of spread oscillators up into chords. Oh, yeah, those are that. So, anyway, <clears throat> I don't know if anyone got the chance to try this because literally it's a free day. You go to vcvrack.com. You download it. It's available for Windows 64-bit, Mac OS X, I think it's 6.8 and above, and also Linux 64-bit. And you download it, and it kind of works. And it's all, all that stuff's free. I mean, it's not totally sophisticated, but the audio rate mod stuff is actually pretty good. I think I created a uh, a patch which which uh, demonstrated that. Any of you people get a chance to check this out and, or are interested in such a thing? Because obviously we've got Softube Modular. There are and ro- uh, uh, bl- reactor blocks. Um, Steve, is this the sort of thing that yeah. is uh, floats your boat? 
Absolutely. It's, um, I did get a chance to try this out, actually, and I was really impressed, especially you know, given the price, the price I think. Um, I'm just turning this down, sorry. Heaven calling me home. That was it. No, that was me. Uh, I've just got another patch. I was just going to demonstrate some audio rate mod stuff, which is quite hard. So have you tried it? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I did. Um, I tried it last night, and I was really impressed. And and f for me, this kind of thing uh, has a, a very a, a useful function. I've already been using uh, UE's Bazil and uh, SoftTube's Modular. Um, so software sort of modular stuff is something I'm kind of familiar with, and and it it it's helped me to avoid going down the Euro rack sort of tunnel if you know yeah. what I mean. not that i've got anything against you iraq <laughs> it's just me i've got i've got a room full of guitar pedals that i've accumulated over the years and i i rarely well i don't, I don't use all of them that's, that's obviously the case but i just know that if i start down the euro uh route i'm going to spend all my pocket money on them i'm just going to be building this incredible machine and i'm going to be viewing it like you know lego or meccano for the rest of my uh, musical career. So instead, when it comes to the sort of sound design uh, thing that requires a modular, the software thing really works for me, particularly um, uh, SoftTube's modular. And this package seems to be similar in, in some yeah. ways. <clears throat> um, and and, and the, the great advantage I, I find for the uh, software sort of modular stuff is that, um, first of all, it's portable. So it's very easy to, you know, uh, to take out on stage or to take into, uh, you know, to a hotel room and just do something. Um, but also, there, there seems for me at least to be a, a sort of sense of um, the, the job. The job in hand is to create the music rather than the sound, if you know what I mean. Whereas, it, whereas with the hardware, uh, because I have some modules here, I tend to find that the job becomes creating sound. So I find mean, what I basically what I'm saying is it doesn't distract me too George. much, um, and that's. Say again. Sorry, that was. I think that I think that was uh, that, that was an interjection by Mark admonishing one of his uh, critters or child. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So it, it, I find that the software stuff helps to keep me uh, focused, and I think that this uh, package really will um, sort of just be another thing that will, that will enable that. So like, thumbs up for me, basically. And also, it's free. It's incredible. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm guessing they because I mean, what you have to do, you register on the site and then you can say, I want these plugins and it ties it to your account and it just downloads the, they're like DLL. So it's obviously, I'm not quite sure how they're running. It's that the, the patches are saved as JSON, which is a, a, a kind of a XML style format type of thing. So I'm guessing it's probably done in some clever programming language, but I'm also, I, I presume there'll be other, I mean, it's it, like I say, it's not terribly advanced, a MIDI control and stuff like that. There's a MIDI module, but you can't MIDI map at this stage. I know, Charles, is, uh, I know you haven't really gone for the modular thing, but do, does this produce, provide you with the sort of methadone equivalent? Yeah, I'll, I'll do, I'll definitely do this. I haven't had a chance to yet, but I'm going to. Um, I think I'm trying to remember who it was. Somebody was telling me that they have a friend who got in, got it really involved in the whole modular scene a couple of years ago and that that's when they basically stopped making music and that speaks to right what exactly Steve was talking about. yeah it's really easy to, i mean i've got the model 15 app on my ipad pro i mean it's the whole reason i bought the ipad pro was just to have that and you know even that i mean i could i could spend days just like coming up with new patches and stuff but never making anything particularly musical but i like the idea of, of this because it just doesn't seem like it's that i mean obviously it's free but time wise the investment wouldn't be that heavy and you can just make some cool sounds you can just stick in to something that's already musical instead of relying on that to be musical if i were Absolutely. if i were to spend my my money buying hardware i would be constantly trying to make that thing into something that is musical that's that's like the you would try to just to justify the money amount of money exactly. you spent I, I take your point yeah. uh, i've got another patch here where i can before i get to you mark which is just a simple sequence i just wanted to demonstrate that's just audio rate mod of the filter so you can get this kind of you know that classic yo -y, well it's not quite yo i think i'm quite got the filter uh the frequency right but Basically, it will. The audio run mod seems pretty decent on it, from what I can tell. Mark, you could run it on a Linux system. How about that? Could be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Got a spare so, week or so to set it up. So, does it run on Android then? 
No, uh, I don't think it does. I mean, and the other thing I should point out, it's only standalone at the moment, but they unveiled it at Nobcon, and it actually, um, they're bringing out a VST slash AU wrapper or bridge for it, so it will run in other things. But then I don't know, because at the moment it's just standalone, which, you know, for some people is going to be difficult because, you, you know, you have to save and recall it, a bunch it, of different things. I mean, it looks kind of cool. I love things like this, and you can just, where you can just start chaining stuff together. And I haven't, I just uh, had a very, very brief look at it. The thing I want to know is whether I can see when I had the, the the Nord modular, I used to try connecting everything to everything it wasn't supposed to be connected to just to see what would happen. So I want to know if I can connect. Um, I think it's things like clock sources and stuff. If you can plug them into the audio, if you can put audio through frequency because they work like frequency dividers then don't they start chopping audio up into smaller chunks and doing all sorts of weird things so i haven't, I haven't looked to that. see if you've got clock sources or or that kind of thing and whether or not they can do that because that's always good fun yeah I, I, I think like it where it's not meant to go and see what happens that's what yeah, you can't I... break it software isn't no it? you can't i mean you can't you can't plug an into an in or an out to an out but yeah that so that that is entirely possible. One thing I, this this brought up an interesting thought. I was having a discussion uh, recently about somebody about this the whole concept of making uh, recallable modular systems as part of this because ultimately you know this is this is one of the difficulties that we have. You know, you invest the hardware; it's very hard to get. And I and I. I, and I, you know, people have thought of all these kind of different ways of storing MIDI CV and, you know, uh, CV values and what have you. And I, I came up with the thought, what would happen if you just made all of the knobs digitally controlled? So they would just spit out CV, that's MIDI CC. So then you could just basically record or take a snapshot of every module you make and then just, I don't know how much it would add to the cost of something if you're going from analog quite, pots to... So you can, you can get computer controlled... Um digital potentiometer chips for the arduino and they're not expensive i mean they're not very much more in cost i mean i don't know about trade price but retail price of a digitally controlled volume chip is not much more than the cost of a potentiometer so that mm. means you can use an arduino to control any parameter and you replace the pot in your electronics with the chip and it, it acts as a virtual pot but then you have digital control over it so tip so uh, you can take like a guitar pedal, pull the knob off, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then know, whack and one of these chips in there, piggyback an Arduino on the back of it and use the Arduino to program all sorts of weird stuff. So you can uh, animate anything that you have on your guitar knobs or anything else that has a pot on it. Um, so theoretically, it, you could do it. Charles, I was going to say, isn't, isn't the idea of like try, you know, the recallable modular thing, isn't that sort of what the idea behind the matrix fruit is? Because that's kind of, it's just does all the patching. It's all digitally controlled and, you know, using MIDI CC and, and then all the patching is just done via this, this matrix system instead of cables. But one thing I wanted to add, I don't know if we, I don't think we mentioned it, is that with this system that, they I, they, I think they have like an interface coming out, but you can use like a, the Motu Traveler, anything that supports DC coupling. You can, so you can interface it with other modular things. Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, can, uh, let me just and the hardware. If I it's just bring amazing. this over here, I, I'll just uh, let me just. Uh, there is a way I can quickly show. I just bring the interface back up again, and I'll drop it on a, a desktop. I've just recently found what the key command is. I'll just sit is. here and look pretty. The. Uh, you uh, the audio device has eight inputs and eight outputs so yes you could if you had an expert sleepers or or something that supported the inputs yes you could use that to bring in cvs as well so yeah you're absolutely right so i mean they built that in from the ground up another neat one is uh, you can see how much the C each each module is using in terms of cpu which is kind of neat i mean if you like that sort mm. of thing anyway i'll quit that because it's it's going to make my computer probably work a bit too hard but yeah uh, after I, I, um, I, I was John P. Shea, I think, who, who spotted that and sent it over. And I just thought that is actually really cool. Uh, and it is really cool. Uh, uh, there have been quite a lot of people saying, hold on, it's not working on my whatever it is. But uh, so I'm working it with uh, 10.2 10 
12.6 and it seemed to work just fine straight out of the box and the, you can change audio devices on the fly in fact you might actually be able to run multiple audio devices at the same time so i for instance in that those patches i was routing it to soundflower because soundflower is part of what captures the desktop and, on, on the system that i'm using here so you know it's actually it's it, in some ways it's more flexible than uh, than than you might think so yeah do check it you out what, actually You've just said something really interesting because Soundflower is a way of routing things between different audio interfaces on your device, right? If you can drag several audio devices into this and then patch them, Soundflower well, is like, you have to think Soundflower through quite carefully, otherwise you start creating loops and things. And when it gets complicated, um, you can, uh, can you save the patches in Soundflower? I don't think you can, can you? So you have no, to set it up so. when you want to use it. And then if you want to use it a different way, you have to set it up differently. You could use this as a virtual pa uh, uh, patching unit for your uh, all for your Soundflower. audio cards. That's and you an could create idea. cable links between things and then you save the patch. The next time you think, oh, I want that audio interface to be feeding this one and I want to have this coming in here and blah, 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 blah. You just load the patch up and it's all set up for you. Now because that... I know we can do that in, we can do that with individual audio interfaces and whatever software comes with them. But if this can interact and integrate different between and integrate different things. Oh, and you can whack filters in between things in the audio world coming in through a filter back out through another audio interface. Look so at not that. Using it yes, as a modular I can. I, I can confirm. I can confirm. Actually, I won't show that. But I've just dragged another audio interface into it and made it a different device. So yeah, that might work. I think you're going to so end up with a certain amount of latency. You haven't tried patching between. Patching between. There'll be a little bit of latency. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. That's an interesting idea. That's a very interesting idea. Good. Good thought, Mark. But there's latency uh, in Soundflower anyway, isn't there? Yeah, You've there the is same, actually. You have to set the latency in Soundflower. I think I might have to experiment with this later, actually. Yeah, try that. That's a good idea. Hmm, lateral thinking. Yeah, there a, you go. It's There's a... He said it was um, really good fun when I got it out. I, I must admit, I hadn't uh, thought of what Mark was suggesting now. I think that's an amazing idea. Um, but my my most excited moment was having had a little bit of trouble installing it, got it working, and I checked the version, and this was the first time I've ever run a piece of software which was a version number of 0. 0.0.0. .0. I felt like that's an important moment. <laughs> yeah, well, you well, realize you have to hang on to that one, Steve, because uh, that one obviously will be highly collectible in ten or fifteen can centuries. Can I jump back a whole topic? Actually, <laughs> I noticed that the uh, the Isotope Spire thing. When I looked at their website, the it's not ready for release yet, is it? But they're already no. on version two of the software. <laughs> Did you notice? Well, that? no, the the, sp the software has been available on the phone for a while. The the new thing oh, is has that it? It attaches oh, right. okay. to the audio <laughs> interface. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, so that makes sense. Oh right, okay. Um, right, I know. Uh, oh, actually, let's do uh, let's do a plug for our stuff as well. Obviously, Wave Junction, our Max for Live synth, uh, which is a two oscillator. Uh, Max for Live synthesizer runs in Ableton Live. You do need Ableton Live. Uh, we're running a 10% discount code at the moment, WJTalk17. If you head over to uh, Sonic State and click on the Wave Junction link, you can uh, enter that when you uh, decide to purchase, which I'm sure you'd be dying to. But remember, you do need Ableton Live and Max for Live. It's got three multi mode filters, it's also got uh, five LFOs and five envelopes and a 12 slot modulation matrix. So, quite a lot of stuff for you to do. There's also a wavetable. Uh, um, slot for each of the oscillators and uh, we're coming out with a, a, a wavetable editor quite soon which is going to be a free update to this so uh, it might be something that you want to check out head over to bit.ly slash wave junction or just via the sonic state site and if you want to get a 10 percent discount uh, use the code wjtalk17 when you uh, complete your purchase and that will do it and uh, i may as well do the uh, quick plug for the t-shirts there we go sonic state merch we've got a number of t-shirts we've got some more designs coming on stream fairly soon as well so uh, if you're interested in uh, a bit of stylish sonic state merch head over to sonic state there is a link to the merch store across the across the site so you should be able to find it any way you like right i'm going to go to uh, this one because we didn't manage it last week and i know steve you are keen to to, to talk about it this is the bastel uh, 60 knobs MIDI controller. Seems like quite a simple thing, but the idea is you could just basically set it up however you want. 
60 knobs, put your own templates on it, do all that kind of stuff. Edit it up however you want, and it's just a, a, a very straight, uh, well, a, a simple six, I guess, what's that? That's uh, six by 10, maybe, does that look like? Two, four, six, yeah, six by 10. Recall memory, change mini. Ah, you can restore and recall them, that's neat. Ah, right, they can be NRPNs. It looks like, is that SysX as well? Did I see SysX in there? Yeah. Yes. Nice. So you can turn it into a DX7 editor. That's niche, but I like the idea of it. Or maybe a D50 editor for your D05. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's what you need. So, uh, Steve, I remember last week you were, you, you were disappointed we didn't get around to that topic. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to you first because uh, I'm guessing you might have something to say. Well, um, I, the nature of, uh, of what I do involves a lot of traveling. And as a consequence, I'm using a lot of software synths. And I have a, a little Akai MIDI mix. I don't know if anyone's seen it. It's like 24 knobs. Um, it's really handy for sound design. In fact, what I've, what I've done um, in Ableton Live is with the main soft synths that I do, I just have individual uh, projects that just have the one synth on, um, but mapped out to the MIDI mix so that I can control the important parameters from that. What, how this relates to uh, this product, that, yeah, that's the one. Um, it's really, really uh, handy uh, little thing, sound design, moving around or even at home. But I always end up running out of dials, out of knobs. And so having this unit, this is what, 61, I think it is. Um, this would give me access to, I think, really every control that I'd ever really want um, on a, a soft synth uh, to get sounds together. And, and, and I didn't realize that this actually had a, a recordable parameters and it did SysX as well. This could be the um, the thing I've been looking for for, I don't know, 30 years to help me program a DX7, which I've got just there. Um, that would be a, a, an amazing thing. So this is this is really good. One thing I noticed though, uh, for looking at this product, is um, it involves some soldering. Uh, oh. You have to assemble it yourself. I, th I think this is correct. So I know oh, at least yes, for me, might. I'm going to have to mm, get, get someone to do it for you. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to have to get the responsible adult that I live with to give me permission to do that. Um, so I don't know whether that's going to put a few people off, but it it also made me think about um, something else that I, I wanted to sort of bring up. I, I don't. I haven't found a uh, MIDI controller that kind of mirrors uh, the parameters that you would normally uh, want to find when you're sound designing on a software synth. Now we've got plenty of knobs. You can assign them to whatever you want. But what I would really like, and maybe this does exist, but I don't know. What I would really like is something that looks a little bit like this. And if you just bear with me one moment, drum roll, please. Go on. Oh, so this is a Roland JP8000, right? Now, it's great fun to play with, although the sound is a bit, I don't know. But you notice how there's a combination of knobs and there's sliders as well. And they've all been, they've all got sort of writing on them so you can see instantly what they refer to. I think there's a real gap in the market. I'm assuming it doesn't exist for someone to bring out a MIDI controller that has this combination of sliders and knobs, and they've got legends printed on them. You can assign them to whatever you want, but if you just wanted to look at a uh, at a panel that just said ADSR or filter cutoff, you, you would have confidence that that was what you were going for. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I that would be uh, really helpful. Well, what I do and have done in the past is I take something like the JP8000 and I use that to control all the synths. So I just use it in MIDI control yeah. mode. So, you, you know, you use the envelope faders for yeah. the envelope. You use the fill, but it does mean yeah. that it yeah. becomes a bit redundant as a sound source, obviously. So, Yeah. I think the thing that I, I, I didn't mention was that I also want it to be about a quarter of the size of the JP8000 yeah, and a quarter of the, the weight of it and cost me £50. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that might be tricky. I mean, the, 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 the 60 knobs itself costs, uh, the kit costs €129. Euros. And then right. uh, the enclosure costs another 30 euros, which is still isn't so bad, but it's kind of useful. What about, um, what about that thing we had recently with all the different knobs that you could stick them on the surface? Do you remember that thing? Uh, yeah, they just don't work. Uh, the, uh, yes, I remember that the, I can't remember what they were called, but they, you stick them on the, on iPad. the iPad. one, the one, with, the, the one that had 
blocks and you put different uh, knobs and oh, the, faders in the blocks. It was one of those, uh, no, it was one of those Kickstarter kind of campaigns a few yes, months I ago. Don't, no, I don't remember that. But that's a, yeah, I I think that could work. I I think what I think what you're right though about, about the labelling and the familiarity. It's like my envelopes are usually over here, so that's where I want my faders to be for anything that I'm doing there. So that makes sense. I don't know, Chicky. Do you is this? I, I mean, when confronted with just a massive grid of knobs, it's not quite. You're not going to the muscle memory is going to be pretty difficult to. to yeah, to it is. Get. I I have to make the I have to make the obvious joke. What a bunch of knobs, um, but then. Uh, the the thing is, it's like it, it is cool, but it's like oh, I just gotta put it together. That's the thing that really turns me off. <laughs> I you know I'd get used to it. You know, with it, it's what six rows of ten, so that's fine. That's not a problem. Um, it is kind of it is quite small. It's quite compact. Um, for that many knobs, it's a it's a little too compact for me. But just having to put together is the thing that's going to turn me off. Yeah, rather... well, maybe so. I mean, I'm sure they'll, 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 you know, someone will do it or they'll sell a kind of full, a fully made kit, I'm sure. Enough. I mean, the one thing that I find with any MIDI controller is you always think, yeah, great, I've got eight knobs and I'll assign them, or however many you've got. The problem is, is you need to kind of design a protocol because when you're in one patch, this is this, this is this, this and then you think, well, actually, I need this to be something else. And it's sort of, well, I don't, I can't remember what, this is when i'm using it with that bit of software and that's why the, the idea of that you know having something a legend underneath you know that, that's why those kind of uh i'm just trying to think of that you know the uh complete control that side of stuff where you or, or the nectar where things are labeled really does help because you can you, you get the yeah. visual cues then but nobody's managed to figure out how to do that i mean i guess the problem is as with any synthesizer, you know, it's the GUI it's that costs the most money, you know. So a MIDI controller with like a little knob per function, little uh, dial underneath it saying what it was, would actually probably cost just as much as a synth. I mean, I think the Behringer stuff does that, doesn't it? The X control, you've got little scribble strips and things like that. So, so you're getting some of the way there, but nobody's yeah. done it with so many controls. And I think it's got to be cost prohibitive. You could do some kind of overlay. You could do some kind of overlay, printed overlay, laser cut printed overlay. Uh, wait, yeah, you could. you could drop onto something, and um, but then you've got to remember to flip it over. And if it's like, oh, I just need to flip over. I'm just going for that track. I need to tweak it. Oh, where's my overlay? Take the old one off. But you know, it doesn't. It doesn't have the same. Whereas you know, if you're going to the track and the track knows what it is, I mean, I think that's probably the beginnings of that kind of uh, the the native instruments uh, NKS system where it the the plugin and the the wrapper and the controller all talk to each other. So if you're labeled, then you oh, know no. what they're going to be and that all the sets of macros, but then you're limited, you know, no matter, you usually get eight macros, don't you? But you always need more, which is, I think what you're talking about, Steve, really. I mean, eight is just not enough because yeah. it might be enough to kind of do the filter, but I mean, you know, there are other yeah. parameters that one might want to tweak from time to time. <clears throat> I find 11. I, I think so. I think there are certain parameters in, in synths that really lend themselves though to the knob or the slider kind of interface and, and others that, that yeah. don't. If you, I mean, I'm trying to think of an example. Sliders are really good for um, envelope generators and all the like rolling stuff and knobs are particularly good for let's say filter cut off. But when you're dealing with, for example, like in Serum, if you're trying to draw a, an LFO shape, you couldn't do that with a controller. And there's other bits and pieces like that. Maybe um, that I can't think of right now. My mind's gone blank, but uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, um, you can go out now. I mean, everybody seems to be, you know, it, it, it's obviously got people thinking like, actually, I could use it for this and that. And, you know, maybe they'll do 60 buttons next or 60 slide, well, maybe not 60 sliders, maybe 10 sliders or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's a start, but it, it, it it's this cyclical kind of thing that we always get, you know, with MIDI controllers. They come in and out of Vogue and people release a new one. And then, you know, you just, you're stuck with the same problem again, which is, yeah, for live, it kind of makes sense because I'm not going to want to tweak every single parameter uh, of a synth yeah. live but for the actual user interface of a software instrument or you know maybe a hardware synthesizer that's over in the rack or whatever you know it's really useful to have that and that i guess the, you know it's back to the ipad but then we're we're talking about stuff on a screen that doesn't have that that haptic haptic feedback which is again problematic for some people. well I, I would i would just before we uh, move on from this topic i really would recommend um if people are looking for controllers for live and they're using Ableton Live, the unit that I've used for years now is the Akai APC40 Mark II. Yeah, um, a lot of people it's love a lovely that, looking, they? Yeah, it's a lovely looking piece of, uh, of equipment, but also the controllers, the, um, they feel really good. And you've got like an LED uh, that will show you exactly where the um, the, the knob sort of is landing in, uh, in Ableton. Uh, uh. It's just 
really, really good. And of course, you, you, you're, realize, you can set up a, a knob sort of per device. So you, you're not just stuck with eight parameters for the entire project, but actually it's eight parameters per device within Ableton. It's really good. Can you can you hack uh, not hack it, but can you have it work with other software to to, to create bi directional yeah. control? Because I, I mean, um, you know, I, I'm I, I don't know if that is possible or it's linked to the Ableton thing. So that's the only way you could get to it. Um, I also use it with Tractor, ah, okay. uh, Native Instruments DJ cool. software, and um, that's kind of interesting as well. There's a, a few guys out there who've created scripts, I suppose, and they've changed the um, the, the the way the, the LEDs work to be like level con, uh, meters and that sort of thing. It's really quite extraordinary. It's a very versatile piece of kit. Mm, I'm thinking because I use uh, this, uh, which if I press the button. I use this to, to for yeah. all of the shot selection and stuff, and it would be useful to have uh, more and also you know knobs which have uh, level controls on it. And that, this is just you know generic MIDI mode, so I might look into that. That looks interesting. Although I have got the program got a... thing you've got though, you know you can well you must have the program. Yes, yes, of course, yeah. I've yeah, just realised right. something. That, um, push two, brilliant as it is, hasn't got any sliders on it. It's got the ribbon fader, but actually yeah. they're all knobs. And That's true. Traders definitely have a different feel for some applications, and without having it pointed out or having thought about it before, it's actually it ought to have sliders on it as well. Yeah, I wonder I'm if you sliders, uh, right? if there was an editor for, if there was an editor for that uh, that Akai that would be pretty useful. I suppose you could always put a bit of translation software in between it and map it, but that would so be a pain. An, 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 uh, the Novation stuff comes with an SDK mode, doesn't it? And a whole user interface and programming stuff. Yeah, so it hasn't it got as that? many con hasn't got as many controls as that. No, I might look into that. That's a good tip, uh, Steve. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I, w I wanted to quickly do this one because this is uh, this is something I discovered. I, I can't remember why I ended up here, but uh, I found I found this thing called. Uh, no, what's it called? It's called Battle of the Beatmakers, and they have these events where they just get producers to show up with three MP3s, 45 seconds long. Just once, I want someone to be like Eminem. And it's tails. You want to go first? Ready? It's tails. You want to go first? Here we go. Of course not. Okay. You know why I asked. So uh, these are two guys. This is Mark Major and Natty Bangs, and they're gonna. Uh, so they get to play, but what's weird about it, they they stand there on the stage and kind of nod, and the audience react, and the and the judges judge it, and they get to play it on a massive pier. This happens in Canada every year. So there's a voice, and then there's this guy as well. This is the other guy. I prefer this guy's beat. So this guy is called Natty Bangs. I think it comes in in a minute. We'll just wait for the beat to drop and then I'll switch it off. I think it's coming up just now. Oh, no, I know, I really, I, there's something about it because the, the idea of, because, you know, we all do it. I mean, if we're not, uh, and there's lots of people who aren't professional musicians who just come up with beats and little snippets and stuff. And the idea of having this kind of playoff to see which beat is the best, and it fits very much into the kind of uh, the jam notion of the hip hop beat, where it's like someone will create a beat and then it'll turn into a track. And it fits that whole culture. And I just thought, what a, what a fantastic idea. They're doing, they're taking uh, 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 stuff for, th for this year uh, as well. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the the idea also, when you're kind of, you're playing, here's what I've done to whoever it is in the studio, it's kind of one of those awkward moments, isn't it? It's the bit where you don't know what to do with yourself and then you're going to go, oh, oh no, I, I, I meant to turn that down or whatever it is. And doing that in front of several thousand people <laughs> just seems like a really weird idea, but a great idea as well. I, th I think we should have more of this across more genres. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think it'd be really cool. I, I, I can, you know, like whenever I play like new beats for people, I always excuse myself and go to the loo while they listen to it because I just don't want to be standing there going. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I wouldn't be able to do that in front of an audience, though. I'd go, "Here's my beat. I'm going to the loo. Be back in 45 seconds." 
<laughs> Maybe you should be a judge instead. You could be a judge instead yeah, of that. Exactly. It's a neat idea. I don't yeah. know. Um, yeah, it's Mark, Mark, do you suffer from the same thing when you kind of go, I finished it, and somebody says, oh, let's have a listen, and then you, you sort of don't want to be there. But, I mean, this this sort of thing is, works can work quite well. I'm, I'm getting better at it, actually. I have realised that I absolutely hate my voice, hate the sound of my own voice. I've spent years and years trying to discuss, not spoken voice, I can listen to myself talk for hours, of course. <laughs> so can but we, if Mark. I so can we. Things, if, I, if, I, if I sing with my Bowie voice or my whatever voice, I've realised I've just been trying to disguise my voice for years. If I just sound like me, when I hear it back, it's just like, oh, God, that doesn't sound right. So that makes me cringe if I'm playing people stuff with me singing in my regular singing voice. I haven't pretended to be someone else. Um, but I'm getting better at playing people things because I'm becoming... Uh, I'm becoming more arrogant and much less concerned about what other people think about my music, which had I been like that when I was 20 years old, I suppose that I would have had a slightly different career. But um, yeah, it's a weird thing though, isn't it? Did you used to go to A&R men and then and you, you hand them the cassette and they put it in? I've done that once or twice. Oh. Horribly important or That's became really excruciating. When I was younger. And I wish I just stuck to my guns and done what I thought was right all along. Um, but yeah, it is horrible. And then they spin yeah, no. it forward 30 seconds and they press play again for about five seconds and they kind of chuck the cassette back at you. And it's just like, oh, oh that's well, a painful Baseline's thing. a bit pedestrian, mate. And you're thinking, pedestrian, yeah. pedestrian, <laughs> pedestrian. Baseline's pedestrian. What the hell does that mean? I mean, what do you mean? <laughs> that's what yeah. it's like. <laughs> that's awful. I, I, I don't know, well, Steve. What, what do you think? Good, I, good um, idea? Um, yeah, kind of. I, I Just picking up on something that Mark said there about being in A&R meetings. Um, I, I've, I've had a similar experience and the, the, I, it was the way that the guys in this video were just standing completely still where their music played out reminded me of um, A&R meetings that I've been in and I've been sitting there just watching my feet whilst the A&R person's put this my tune on and whacked the sound up to 11 really loud, danced around to it and then we've had a great conversation. And I find out the following day that he didn't like it at all. So, what? You know, that's A&R people. But, you know. Wow. Um, still, I, I got to examine my shoes. And, um, yeah. I, I think that the um, this the, this kind of competition thing, I think it looks like a lot of fun. It, um, it reminded me, I used to host in a previous life um, sort of DJ uh, battle-offs. Um, we're talking early 90s here. I think it was, there was some... I don't know if it was DJ Magazine, but DJs would come along, and there'd be about six or seven of them, and they would do the most elaborate and also impressive sounding scratching in front of um, uh, like a, a jury. And then they would get elected um, and selected to go down and play in London to like do a, a more prestigious version. It was the, the DJ, DJ Mix, wasn't it? That. That's the yeah. one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's precisely. And uh, so, yeah, this looks like fun. Although I did notice that the the MC, he definitely was earning his money in that video. And it was yeah. a classic moment when he's trying to get the crowd going and he says, Toronto, stop being Toronto, which is <laughs> just brilliant. <laughs> I think the boy being that Toronto crowds are well known for being reserved, I assume. I don't know, maybe uh, so. so. It's a really good idea, but if you're interested, uh, you could go to, uh, if you're in the area, you can go to DJ, uh, sorry, battleofthebeatmakers.com, and I think they're accepting entries. And they've got a really clever structure where you can pay a bit more and get VIP stuff, which really sort of works quite well. It's funny, you met, that's the MixMag, the MixMag DJ Scratch competition. Right. That was a really big that's deal, uh, SL1200s. Because I remember uh, when uh, Tom's Diner came out, we won the award, the DJ MixMag award for uh, best remix, and we had to go and and get the award but while we were there we saw all these guys just really just doing some amazing kind of dj work scrap this like scratch stuff it was really awesome and some of them yeah. are just i forget the names of them but they were just amazing you may well have been at one of those uh, well at the time i was up in the northeast they were, they were ah, okay. doing the sort of heat um in a club called walkers there's a few stories there but we don't have time but no the, the amount of um effort and and chip and practice that these guys must have gone into and and women as well uh to do this uh scratching was just incredible it's one of the reasons why i never scratched because you know how could i possibly compete with these people yeah and the other thing is uh um yeah, I, I just think it's a great idea, and I think it's the sort of thing that we could do in electronic music as well, because we're all, you know, we're all easy. We can easily do, you know, a uh, an eight bar 
or a 40 or a 30 second sort of snippet and then see how the crowd reacts. So I like the idea because it's encouraging without having to get into the whole thing of writing a song and, and doing all of that other stuff. <laughs> I think it might be it might be quite a positive thing. I don't know. Um, I, I've just remembered, and this is crazy. I can't believe I missed this. Obviously, Machina. Did you, did anyone see um, Machina Mark Mark Three? We did a video with uh, uh, with uh, Boris, Boris where, for business. the launch. The um, I don't know if you saw that. Boris. I won't play. This is always it's a bit oh. meta, isn't it? When I play myself on on the show, but uh, I don't know if you had a chance to see uh, uh, Machina. Whether cool. you're Machina so users, a... uh, obviously we've got the complete control Mark Two as well. Um, is this something that 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 um, is part of your world, Chicky? Does does that does that show up? I mean, is that something you'd be interested in the the Machina Mark Three? It uh, sort of. I, I mean, I use Push Two, so I, I'm ah. not I'm not too deeply invested in the in the the um, the other German company, but um, but yeah, it, it, it does seem really quite fascinating. I mean, it's got quite a quite a few upgrades, which I really like. So. But I still love my push too. I use that all the time. But it could that's, use it could use some faders on it, as Mark said. It yeah, no, faders. that's that's probably true as well. Um, that that's what it looks like there. Um, Steve, are you a machiner guy? I mean, yeah. have you... well, I, I had to make a choice. I don't know, four or five years ago, was it going to be Ableton Live or was it going to be Machine? And I chose Live. So um, no, this this is it really isn't on my radar i'm afraid it looks kind of interesting though but I, the, the two screens looks uh, certainly um impressive yeah they are really and I, and they, I, they look fantastic yeah and i know the sound libraries that uh, native instruments bring out seemingly every couple of days for machine some of them are very impressive as well maybe i'll, I'll take another look but i must admit i've invested so much time in things like push two as the other guys have mentioned and um, and Ableton Live itself, I, I can't see myself moving over. But you never know. Never know. Mark, Machina, have you tried Machina? I know Gaz reviewed it, uh, Machina Mark II or the Machina uh, One. He's going to take a look at Mark III for us, I think. If I did, I tried the first one, and it was a really long time ago. And like everyone else, I've gone down the Ableton route, and I've got Push 2, and I think it's brilliant. And uh, kind of, I, didn't, I don't know, I just, I see... I've moved to I've moved away from very linear world of logic, which I never really liked anyway, and sort of got forced into with Pro Tools and logic and uh, things that work like tape because the people I wanted the uh, people I worked with wanted to work like tape, and I've gone back to doing things in chunks. So I like small chunk thinking. So I like the thinking of Ableton and being able to throw things at it and make loads of loops up and then develop songs out of those kind of ideas and i'm sure this can do much the same thing and it's probably brilliant but i'm in a world that i'm happy with at the moment so yeah no that's um, fair enough that's fair enough to, uh, oh god i was gonna say i was getting too old i'm not getting too old at all am i <laughs> well it's time Ignore isn't it it's time kind of but uh, the thing that was really cool about the machine stuff is uh, they've got these uh, snapshot macros. So you can start with your pattern as it is, and then you can you can go crazy in performance mode with all of the additional macros that you can map to the knobs. Uh, I think you get, I'm not sure how many screens you get, quite a lot of macro screens, and they can be, uh, they could do all kinds of stuff. And then you just hit, the, rather than reload the pattern again, you just jump back to a, that particular state that you've given it, and you can have multiple states, and you can morph between them. And that uh, Boris showed us that That's in the demo, and that they were re it, it, when you see that in action, it's like, oh yeah, for live performance, that is really cool. But again, you, you know, that has to, be, it, yeah, a bit, but it's tying in with the uh, the kind of machine ecosystem, and it's you know, it's not like you could use it with live. I mean, I'm sure you could figure out a way of doing it, but it, that's the stuff, that's the way that NI have gone. In the same way that Ableton went, you know, it's tied very much to their thing, rather, although you can access other third-party plugins and what have you. Nick, is, it, is it significantly day. different to changing uh, scenes in Ableton Live? Um, well, they, there's that as well, because there's an idea scratch pad, which was in Machina Jam, uh, which enables you to kind of build up grids of ideas and trigger them off the pads but it's not it's not as advanced i think as the ableton workflow because that is it's its entire um sort of raison as it were so yeah it sort of is yeah. and sort of isn't but it is possible to do that and most of the stuff you can do i mean pretty much everything you could do that i saw was uh you know just don't bother looking at the computer when I mean, with those kind of screens you can get it uh, and it's the same price, yeah. so it's actually pretty cool. But I think, I think uh, to be fair, you know, none of us are really machiner users, so it's kind of it, it, it's kind of difficult for us to kind of go, yeah, it's going to change my workflow. The I mean, you know, if you, without using I noticed, it. 
the thing I notice about electronic music is it's very grid based, as in it's really tight sixteenths or eighths or thirty seconds or whatever. And uh, I play the guitar and think I play it really badly because I can't play like a machine. But I was doing something the other day and I started editing my guitar to put it on the grid. And I thought, hang on a minute, I preferred the sound of it before I moved it to the grid. And I think I play with something like 25% swing time because I'm human. Um, but I want my machines to start to to complement what I do now rather than me trying to uh, mm. put bits in to go with the machine. So I've started making music the other way around again, whereas uh, uh, before I was sort of like using machines to try and perfect my music. Now I want the machines to be as human as I am, if that makes sense. So, Yeah, I, I think that, that does. All these young I think it... people out there. <laughs> well, it, no, it's <laughs> very interesting very that you – it, 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 it discounts the – yeah, it discounts the ability of the musician to kind of be able to feel it. And, and that, um, Gaz has spoken yeah. um, about this before, where he Very uses uh, Cubase to, to to say a take of an acoustic guitar and a singer-songwriter, and he maps the tempo to that and then programs everything, and it follows. So you get these tight electronic sounds working exactly to the grid, and then he can snap all the other things to the vibe of so that. And, uh, uh, and that, but that uh, it's still at the moment, it's quite a complicated process and requires quite a lot of human intervention to kind of go, oh, you know, yeah. it didn't quite interpret that right. But it, 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 that's the sort of thing it sounds, it, when you hear it done, it sounds great because it's got that absolute rock solid feel, but it's not rock solid tempo. And that, you know, because yeah, back leading, aren't they? Yeah. So the, 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 the humans leading and then all the machines follow the human. So it has a human, uh, a, humanitarian no that's not the right word yeah that's human, that work. Feel, yeah so um so but if you start machine do you know, i've done it i've bought a bass an acoustic bass guitar the other day and i've started writing songs with an acoustic bass because then i'm just using a root note which gives me more options to sing different things over it so i'm starting with something very simple and then adding all the stuff in once i've got the song but if you start with the machine you're already starting in that world of tight grid and um then i don't know that it you know well, then, then you but then you've got to do more interesting yeah i agree sorry steve you want to come in there um what i, I was just going to say that I, I this sounds like um what we're describing here the, the perfect place for where ai will be useful in music yeah that's a good thing where the where rhythmic interpretation very quickly what's coming in yeah and would to interpret where this um grid would uh you know appear so that you've got um, a, a very quick way of, of getting the, the, the machines to cooperate with the human beings, I think. And also, that doesn't sound like something that would be too difficult to program. Um, I no, say I think, getting uh, here with complete ignorance, <laughs> but, you know. No, well, I think you're right. Because if, if you, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Charles. I was going to say, Melodyne, Melodyne will do that where you can put a song in and it can yeah. pick out, even if there's no drum track, it can pick out the actual grid of the song. Yeah, I think that's I part want... of Gaz's workflow. So he creates the tempo map, brings that into Cubase, and then and then everything runs off that. that. And it, you know, but it's still quite a kind of almost quite a long winded, specialized skill I've process. Got... You have to figure it out. I've got the answer to it, and that is that you create a film with some like really quite uh, gripping emotional scenes in it, and you connect somebody to a galvanic galvanic skin response thing. <laughs> uh, to see how they respond to different things while they're playing a piece, set piece of music. And then at the end of it, you know, the bloody gory scenes will create some kind of emotive response in the human. And and they'll change the way they're playing because they've just seen, I don't know. Uh, whatever. Something, whatever. yeah. Uh, we could have a, a bloody gory scene, a very, very happy scene with a golden retriever. George could star in that. Uh, we could have a scene with... Um, uh, lots of sex we need some of that and then a scene where somebody gets lots of money so you could map all of those emotions out and you could have different grids for those different things and then you know the the person could uh, then kind of uh, preempt what the machine was going to do by kind of and thinking oh, I'll right. just think about oh, yeah uh, it sounds like something you need to write a letter to google for to, to get them to but yeah you're I'm gonna absolutely write to right Poland, okay? i'm going to say please stop making those little beautifully <laughs> engineered and very uh, nice looking future door stops, which you'll forget to write software drivers for in seven years' time. Is it about? <laughs> Sorry, uh, maybe they've stopped doing that, and of course, they'll support them for the next 20 years or make them who knows, compliant, which hopefully 
that they have, but who knows? But yeah, and please go and develop this new beautiful AI interface. Now, there's an idea. <laughs> That's a, and what a lovely way to end. Um, Steve, that was a great idea. I think you're right about the idea for AI because I think that that sort of stuff would humanize things to a great, and also, you know, it would it would reward people who can play in an emotionally pleasing yet uh, technically imperfect imperfect fashion, which is kind of after all. The, yeah. the nature of music right yeah yeah what yeah, a great I, way to I do, end i like the idea of um yeah, indeed. artificial uh, intelligence mm -hmm. helping us to cooperate i think people have this idea that artificial intelligence will just automate processes yeah. you know, and take the human humanity out but actually well i hope that doesn't happen you know <laughs> well, you want to, I want to have a car that drives me around as badly as my mum does, actually. That could be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they, well, there's a the thing. A, a, an automatic car around. that models other people driving. That would be amazing. Wow, that's yeah, an that interesting be, thought. Yeah. Great wow, okay. Well, I, I think I think we're stretching a little. I think we're stretching. Uh, this, this, it's been a great oh, show. Sorry, and uh, we're, we're heading off in another sorry. direction, which probably we haven't got time for now. But I want to say thank you very much to everybody for joining us. It's been uh, much fun as ever. Uh, thank you everybody in the chat room and YouTube chat room and also in uh, IRC chat for joining us I'm sorry I was a bit distracted because the conversation was so scintillating I didn't I didn't refer to you all that much but uh, we do appreciate you coming it adds an extra frisson knowing there's actually somebody out there kind of watching what we do when we do it live so once again thank you very much to everybody for joining us uh, and don't forget um, as I said if you want to uh, uh, enter the competition for to win Isotope RX6 what you've got to do is tweet the hashtag powerful editing and the hashtag RX6 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. Uh, and that will enter for you the competition uh, next week. Uh, that's it for this time. Uh, Steve, thank you very much for joining us. Have a lovely songwriting trip. I hope you you write some beautiful, sunny, happy, happy stuff. Or at least you can dredge out those uh, sort of emotions awesome. that don't tie in with that to, to, to make them dark and interesting. You know, it must be hard when the <laughs> weather's good. I'll work it out. Excellent. Thanks. Well, lovely having you, Steve. It's been a pleasure. Uh, SteveHillier.net, yes. check out his stuff. Uh, also, uh, Charles Chicky Reeves, thank you very much for joining us too. Uh, Glad and to be here. Um, Glad to be here. enjoy some of your time out. Um, and uh, Not touring. Not touring. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, big did you tell me you up, just but, bought, um... did you just tell me you'd bought something new? I've, I've, I've got oh, this, yeah. did you get that in the show? Could you, do you want to uh, just tell us quick? Go on. What, what was it? Oh, oh, no, what did I, I didn't get anything at a show. I just bought a, uh, the Universal Audio uh, Apollo 8, and uh, I, I love it. Absolutely love it. I already have oh, the, the mic pre's. Yeah, the mic pre's. I love the mic pre's. They just sound beautiful. Uh, I bought a Matrix Brute. You know about that already, so. <laughs> yeah, lucky guy. I've always fancied one of those now. I kind of one of those. It's like a, it's like a muscle well, car of sense, I think I said. Yeah, I will. I'll come up sometime. Charles, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Sublime-UK.com is where you can find out what Charles is up to. And uh, Also, Mr. Tinley, thank you for joining us too. Sonus Magus, or Sonus Magus, depending on how you pronounce it. Uh, Sonusmagus.com. I don't know how to pronounce it. It doesn't thank matter. There's much. two Sorry ways. Sorry about the red herrings. Come That's to visit my shop. At, oh, look there. Sonusmagus.com. That's how I say it. We have red herrings and, of course, orange, yellow, green, blue, pink, and violet herrings. And uh, if you come and visit me in my shop, I'll talk to you for about... 90 minutes and won't expect you to buy anything because i'm very good at not selling things so, Excellent. Uh, <laughs> not sure how to take <laughs> if you buy me a cup of tea i'll talk to you for ages thank you mark that's ever a uh, great value and i just want to say thank you to everybody and don't forget oh yeah do check out the merch store you can find the link to it everywhere if you're interested in a t-shirt uh, or the mug uh, we got the uh, the Sonic State mode, which actually does have the word Sonic Talk on it. So I suppose you could kind of, uh, if you like the show, you could have one of those and drink a cuppa out of it while you watch the show or watch it live. That's it for this time. Thank you very much for everybody for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.